Sardinia today, there are still a few thousand stone buildings and towers standing, dating back to the second millennium before Christ, the Bronze Age. These monuments, made of cyclopic stones, are called nuragas, and the culture they are part of, the nuragic culture. A typical nuraga is situated in a panoramic spot and has the shape of a truncated conical tower. Come and join us in this movie and start to explore this fascinating prehistoric culture. This is the traditional dating as found, for example, in Wikipedia, putting the first Nuraks around 1800 BC. Jacobe Manka, a leading archaeologist and editor of the journal Sardegna Antica, questions the classical dating. We are on the road visiting one of the early type of Nuragas a so-called corridor nuraga. As the name implies, its main characteristic is that the inner part forms a corridor running through the monument. When we look at the huge stones, we see that they are very rough and uneven when compared to other nuragas, which are built from nicely worked pillow style stones. But the use of rough, irregular blocks is not a clear sign of archaic origin, because we also see similar stonework used in later add-ons. Early or archaic nuraks often have an irregular form and are also termed bastion nuraks. Even older are cyclopic walls, evolving from earlier megalithic stone settings. There is an example in close vicinity of the archaic Nuraga Krastu. Jacobe puts these early beginnings into the third millennium before Christ and proposes the start of early Nurag edifications close to the year 2700 before Christ. This leads us to the typology of the Nuraks. We touched upon the archaic types made of junky, raw or just coarsely labored stone blocks. Many of them consist of corridors covered by huge flat stones or they already show a butt construction. Here, in the Nurage Marra, both types of construction can be seen next to each other. The outer form is most often irregular, but it can also be round. Some of the round types have evolved into towers with up to three floors, each one with a toloic chamber. A tolos is characterized by its false dome, created by the superposition of successively small rings of stones. The resulting structure resembles a beehive. Most of the nuraks contain such a tolos and are therefore called Tolos Nurag. Some Nuraks remain in that monotower state, such as the famous Nurage Santa Sabina or Sarbana in Silanus. Others, over time, have experienced the addition of further stonework, 
surrounding the principal tower in different ways. Sometimes the additional construction leans onto the main tower as seen here at the well-retained Nurage Orolo. In other instances, the additional toloi are embedded into a more or less smoothed out wall construction. To the main tolos, up to five additional toloi are added in that way. The largest nuragas are huge fortresses with an outer ring wall, including more towers, so that the whole edifice includes more than 18 toloi. A typical nuragic site is first of all composed by a nurage. Often the nurage is not singular, but is part of a whole chain of towers covering a distance of a few kilometers, probably all ones belonging to one Nuragic clan. A second important element is the grave of the type Tomba di Gigante, the giant grave. The name results from the myth that giants have been buried there. An obvious conclusion, looking at the tomb chamber, in most cases longer than five meters. Today they are thought to be collective tombs for one clan. Maybe only the bones are stored there, after a precedent decarnation process. Sometimes the grave is quite close to the Nurage, sometimes it's further away. Often it is not a single tomb, but a group of two or more in close vicinity. In some instances, even more tombs are aggregated into an area as at the site of Madau, close to Fonni. A third element is the sacred pit, a well serving as a source of water, but probably also with a sanctuary function. Especially in Iron Age, a water cult seems to have developed with a strong impact in form of elaborated constructions. At the site of Romanzesu, there is a continuity from Bronze Age to the time of the Romans. Not all of the thousands of Nuraks still standing today are easily accessible by car. Many of them are deeply hidden in the back country. Small, bumpy dirt roads, most of them missing in a normal GPS system, bring us deep into the Sardinian Macchia. Often we then have to walk through thorny bushland, and sometimes we have to give up because closed gates, ferocious dogs, high fences, and impenetrable thicket terminate our way. Of course, this has also some good aspects. It means that the interested researcher will find many undisturbed places and the quest for them 
has some real Indiana Jones flavor. Many neurologic sites are not excavated and the retreat of pastoral activities leads to an advance of vegetation. A lot of nuragas are today heavily covered with trees and bushes. It is obvious from the term giant grave that the nuragic remains are connected to myths and stories and the memories of the locals. There are even stories in some places where the elders account for findings of huge skulls and bones. Unfortunately, none of these finds are preserved or scientifically documented, neither in Sardinia or elsewhere. The myths have been empowered by the fact that the Nuragic people have been able to handle huge stones, even far heavier than 10,000 kilograms. Jacobe guides us to the Nuraga Ponte, which features a gigantic architrave stone. After some measurements and calculations, we arrive at a conservative estimate of the weight of around 14 tons. Is it possible to lift a 14,000 kilogram megalithic stone? with a wooden lever and manpower? Applying the material data from oak wood into a beam equation, considering a 22 meter long lever, a thickness of the oak beam needs to be larger than 30 to 40 centimeter, depending on the cross-sectional shape. The weight of such a beam would be around 1,460 kilograms. This weight could be handled by 30 strong men. The force acting on the longer side of the beam by the weight of the wood alone is approximately 13 kilonewton, where half of it acts as a downward force at the end. Therefore, the additional downward force which has to be generated by adding weight to the lever end is 7.2 kN, which corresponds to 734 kg and therefore around 13 men with an average weight of 60 kg each sitting close to the beam's end. The question how the stone could have been fixed to the beam is addressed by experiments from Albers and Viet. They show that an 80 mm wide strip of bull rawhide can be rolled into a cord with a diameter of 25 mm and a surprising strength of 11,000 Newton. At least 13 of these ropes would be needed to hold the stone, a couple more to be on the safe side. Despite the overwhelming presence of prehistoric remains in Sardinia, the Nuragic culture is hardly present in the awareness 
even of interested persons. It is not recognized that the perfection of the Tolos probably happened here, long before the Mycenaeans and the proto-Celtic people of Ireland constructed their Toloi. This is all the more a pity because the leftovers offer us a richly illustrated insight into a Bronze Age storybook of Mediterranean culture. Although we do not have written memories from Sardinia, it is nevertheless the age of the Biblical Abraham and his descendants. The change from Bronze Age to Iron Age is in Sardinia and also in Palestine, dominated by events around the sea. The stories of David the Hebrews fighting against the Philistines, Pelisset, are a wonderful insight into the life of early Iron Age mankind. Here ends our journey into the Nuraji culture, but only for the moment, because there is so much more to discover.